And now we are joined by Jason Pipkin. He is a pro trader. Some of you may know him as Jipkin on Twitter. He's been on the show with us a couple of times in the past, but it's been a while since he's joined us. So Jason, welcome back. How have you been? I've been great, Flip. Flip. Glad, to, glad to be back on with you. Yeah, I think this is going to be fun. Uh, you know, we, we've been chatting in the last couple of days about a new initiative that you have launched that wanted to bring uh, to the attention of our viewers and our listeners. And uh, this is a, a day or two ago, you launched what appears to be the first in a series of uh, prediction contests, political prediction contests, and you're actually putting up your own money, which is kind of interesting. Usually in trading, the object is, of course, to make money, not give it away. So uh, tell us what this is all about. Uh, I mean, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. I want, I want you, the listener, and you, Flip, as well, if you want to join, to come take my money. So I'm uh, doing a little contest for who can best predict the 2020 presidential election. And all you have to do is basically answer, it's a survey, Google form, 50 questions long. You're going to give me the win probability for the Democrat candidate in like 23 states and what you think the margin of victory is going to be. And that's it. And you submit that and then whoever's the best wins. And the prize started as 125 for this contest that closes uh, August 1st. And then another predicted trader, Analan, came to me and said he wanted to contribute some money to the prize. So he chucked in some of his cash and now it's $250 to first place. You can go to my blog, predictingpolitics.com. And it's the first post there, has links to everything. I give you the URL of the Google form, but it's a Google form URL. So it's like 50 characters long and completely random. So you said there are 50 questions. This is across all 50 states. Is this Senate races, House races, presidential, state, you know, state by state contests? What, what, what are people trying to predict the win percentage of? Uh, absolutely. So it is uh, all presidential. So you don't have to test. We're not testing any knowledge of Senate, House, or any of that. And it is all on the odds of the Democratic candidate. So I phrased it that way. And, you know, it's a rare event that Joe Biden isn't the nominee on Election Day, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're basically betting on the odds of Biden, or not betting, but you're, you're predicting what odds Biden has to win a set of 23 states. I picked the 23 competitive ones. So it'll be like, what do you think Joe Biden's chances are in Alaska? And you might say, ah, I don't think he's going to win. Whenever you'll enter a number between one and 99 for his mm -hmm. odds in Alaska. And then it'll ask you right below that, what will Joe Biden's margin of victory be or defeat in Alaska be? And you'll enter a number there between minus 100, if you think Trump's going to get 100% of the vote and Joe nothing, to plus 100, the converse is true. And you might pick something like, uh, he'll lose by 10 points. So you put minus 10 in. And it's just that format repeated for the, the 23 states I deem to be interesting and competitive. Um, and then at the end, the scoring is going to be how close you get to all that stuff. So the more confident you are that uh, Joe wins or loses a state, the more points um, you'll get, if that turns out to be the case. And the closer you are to the margin of victory, the more points you'll get. And you'll, the, in fact, the contest scoring is weighted towards the margin of victory side of things because it's a little easier to, to differentiate that mm -hmm. uh, among a whole big pool of participants. Okay, so for all the swing states, and it sounds like it's a pretty wide battleground. You've come up with 23 states. Everyone has to decide what they think the odds of Biden's win there are and what they think the margin of Biden's win or loss in that state is going to be in, in the presidential contest. And you say, you say it's weighted largely towards the margin of victory, but also how close you, you are in those percentages. So you're not saying Biden wins this one, Trump wins that one, Biden wins this one, but you've got to actually differentiate, I think, Biden's 60 percent to win here. Or, you know, if you really see an upset in, say, a Trump held state uh, and you're more confident of it than the conventional wisdom, you can kind of score alpha points on the other competitors by saying, I really want to move, you know, 90 percent that Biden's going to win North Carolina, whereas I think other people are going to say it's a 60, you know, 55, 60 uh, kind of um, uh, a race. Is, is that the idea where you want to sort of get, uh, differentiate the, the traders that are able to better calibrate their, their probabilistic forecasts here? Yeah, I mean, it's whatever strategy people want to use. So if you want, you can go through and do ones and 99s for everything, you mm -hmm. know, and maximize your score if you happen to get all states correct. Um, 
the reason that, and that would be, that's a viable strategy. You probably have a good calibration that way. You'd have a perfect calibration. Um, but uh, you run a big risk because you'll lose a lot of points if you're wrong. And in addition, it's only 20% of your final score. So you still have to get close with the margin of victory, which means you do actually have to think about the relative strength of Biden in all the different states. Uh, which is the whole point of the contest. Sure. And now, end of the day, again, you're putting up your money. Another Twitter user or another trader has put up their money. Who, who knows if maybe uh, we'll see the pool continue to grow. At the end of the day, though, and you're, of course, a professional tr predicted trader, there's got to be some value to this, uh, some value in this to you. Are, are, you is, are you using this as sort of a crowdsource way to inform your trading on the state-by-state -state contest on predicted? Is this more of an academic uh, exercise. You're obviously also, a, you know, a, an academic researcher and a scientist. So, what, you know, what's what's your aim? What's your end in all this? Yeah, my my angle. It's actually more academic than trading based. Um, I, I I can already tell you, having looked, there's 34 people have entered so far, and I've looked at their data and aggregate, and I haven't learned anything I didn't already know. Okay. Um, and and I think most people will not be surprised by that. That when you draw upon a universe of predicted traders, you're going to get people who uh, think very similar, for instance, for instance, to how predicted markets are already priced, yeah. um, with some interesting exceptions. But I won't go into any more of that until the data is released, uh, which is actually another important reason I wanted to do it, which is that I'm going to make these data public after submissions close. So we have four contests, August 1st, September 1st, October 1st, and November 1st. So progressively getting nearer to the election, four chances to win the same amount of money. Hmm. and after submissions close, I put out the whole list of everyone's predictions so you can see yourself and everybody else and what they did. And uh, you can heckle your friends for making some dumb pick or, or look at, you know, Sharko Rubio's pick in some state and, well, I wonder what he's thinking there or whatever. Um, right. It's just, a, I think it's just fun. Yeah, as we all know, that's the, the best part of predicting politics is the smack talk and the uh, <laughs> the bragging rights. But so if I understand it properly, so you said there's sort of four, four rounds of this, uh, uh, each uh, concluding on the first of the month from now to November 1st. And is it the same universe of questions you're asking four times and this population has to kind of lock in by the end of each month? Or are you moving on to different uh, different questions in different races in the in the subsequent months? Yeah, so the content, it's going to be very similar. Um, each contest is separate. So you don't have to enter all four and all, you know, you'll be eligible for the prize for each one you enter. Um, and I may add or subtract straights as the race shifts. So if it's no longer interesting to ask questions about Kansas, I'll get rid of Kansas and tack on, uh, I don't know, some, some, something considered Democrat safe that maybe wouldn't be in that case. Um, sure. Or maybe it keeps moving towards Joe and I'll put in Indiana and, and Nebraska one in Missouri or whatever. Right. So I'll, I'll shift it around. Maybe I'll add some Senate. I wanted to start with something that was relatively manageable. It probably takes you five to 15 minutes to complete the survey, depending on how long you've thought about this before. And I didn't want it to be any longer than that. Right. Okay. So basically it's a, it's an attempt to take the temperature of that battleground. Should the battleground map kind of shift? August, September, October, maybe your universal question shifts a little bit, but sort of the, the, the aim seems similar. Just want to use kind of want to take four different slices, uh, you know, a, a, over the course of the calendar between now and election day. So, so, so that's interesting. So August 1st, of course, is just, what is it, four days away. So, so will we get to see this first round of picks, uh, you know, sometime next week? That's right. Uh, next so Sunday, I'll be publishing everyone's first round of picks. You'll get to see how the average stacks up to what all the modelers are saying, what all the polls are saying, what the markets are saying, what the various handicappers are saying. I have it all organized in a nice, neat spreadsheet that I think people will enjoy. Um, and then we see where it goes from there. And we'll see if strategies change for the next month, if the prices change. I'm very interested to see if an individual uh, contest entrant will change from month to month mm -hmm. or if they're going to hold the same line. So it's just going to be a fun project. And now are we going to see the names uh, or Twitter handles or, you know, uh, predict it usernames of the specific predictions on, on your publication? And, and is there any, so again, I think that as you mentioned, that's kind of part of the fun, the community engagement 
sense of this too. Is that is there any risk though that you know a notable or or kind of um, infamous uh, uh, predicted influencer, message board influencer, uh, might want to put out some wild predictions that they don't have any anticipation of of coming true to try and influence public perception and market price upon your publication or or, or do you do you look for that and try to weed that out at all if things look like they're really kind of um, uh, bad faith predictions I'm not going to weed anything out you put your numbers up I'm going to post them so <laughs> I, I can tell you so far that does not seem to be the case um, and you know I, I I'm not going to divulge any but anyone submitted so far but they span a wide range, as you might expect. We'll recognize some of the names. You'll, re you'll definitely recognize some of the names. I think a lot of the big dogs that you may be thinking of probably won't bother submitting at all, but we'll see. Maybe they will. Right. Um, I'll be submitting. I'm not prize eligible, though. Um, and if you do want to be prize eligible, you do have to have your name attached to it. So that's the one condition. If you want oh, the prize, you've got to yeah. be willing to put your name to the prediction. All Otherwise, right, you're welcome to submit. It. Just be anonymous. Yeah. And folks have three days left. Was it close at midnight on the 31st? Is that the, the submission uh, It deadline? closes at 11.59 p.m. and 59 seconds on August 1st. So you have to get it in by the end of August 1st, Eastern time. Okay, by the end of August 1st. So it's by the end of, uh, was that Saturday? Saturday. By the end of the day, Saturday, folks, Eastern time, get that in at predictingpolitics.com. Jason, maybe we can have you back next week after the first round uh, of results are published to get a look and see who's right and who has egg on their face. Absolutely. I'd love to do it. Great. We'll come back and join us soon. Everyone go to predictingpolitics.com to join in this contest, this experiment. Follow Jason at Jipkin, J-I-P-K-I-N on Twitter, and we will see you again next time.